Hello everyone, welcome to The Ranting Shop, it's me, Melissa, and today we're going to be talking about Love and Marriage, Huntsville. Uh, let's just get right into things. So, Mel is meeting up with Letitia, and before Letitia comes in, she, there's this flashback of their relationship, which has been tumultuous, to say the least, because of some disagreements that arise or arose around Melody's issues with Martel and she accusing Marceau of cheating as well and Letitia not being ready to receive that information or believe that information so that created some hostility between the both of them and that made their relationship quite volatile for some time and they have come to a better place in present day and so they or Melody decided to take a first step or a second step and invite Letitia over to her house and Letitia discussed her bottle of champagne and I told you guys this before it's called Black Bottle, and the champagne tastes like chocolates, like I told you guys that Chrysanthemum stated many months prior. So they talk about, Tisha talks about going to Houston, because they're part of some type of Houston bar something something, and you know now, because their business is part of the bar scene, they're going to be there to represent Houston Bar Week or something of that sort. Then Melody talks about, you know, her new experience being single being unattached to someone she feels free and now her alone time is very sacred to her and she's repeat she's repeated that for quite some time during these past episodes that she values her freedom and she's very sensitive about who invades her personal and free time of course Letitia talks about her and Marceau and the fact that she wants more romance in their relationship and she said that COVID brought them together because of course the lockdown and people had no options of really going outside of their homes for quite some time and that forced them to be tighter together however since some of the rules are being adjusted and less strict he is working on his project and that puts him outside of the home a lot and their relationship with Tisha is suffering and she just wants to go back to a place where they could you know find that romance again and Melody was telling Tisha that the key is basically to stay committed to the goal if you guys have a goal in mind whether it be business wise or relationship wise or whatever the case is it's important to be committed to that so that you're able to finish it in a timely manner and get back to what's important if the relationship is important, the marriage is of utmost priority, get the business aspect over and done with in a timely manner so as to come back and, you know, focus on the marriage front. And she mentioned that, you know, with her and Martel, she thought that they were both on the same page as far as business was concerned and being committed to their projects and so on as a united front and stuff until she realized that Martel was, you know, doing other things on the side. So because she says that she doesn't want Tisha and uh, Marcel to go on that same, you know, negative path that they went on, she hopes that they're able to stay committed to their goals as a united friend. Tisha wants romance and Melody's thinking that perhaps a counselor could be of great use to them. And of course, Letitia is not very keen on hiring counselors. She feels like counselors shouldn't be hired when it's the bad times, but should also be implemented in the good times, regardless of the fact when is having a counselor ever a bad idea? I feel like Loki, Tisha, and Martel have the same mindset when it comes to incorporating a third party into their marriage. They feel like everything is okay. It's not that bad. It shouldn't have to go to that extent. And, but they're really there to provide an unbiased opinion on the issues that you guys are having. And con uh, considering that Marceau is your husband, I feel like you should really consider... Because when it's you and Marceau, Marceau thinks how he thinks, you think how you think, you guys never get to a resolve. So I think it would be a really good idea to get a counselor to be able to gauge on you guys' communication and what's best for the both of you. So anyways, that's a good little chit-chat, good to see that they're making progress in their relationship. Now we talk about Martel and his mom. They discuss, of course, Martel is there to kill snakes because apparently her home is somewhat riddled with, you know, lots of snakes sometimes. So she often calls Martel to help her with the snakes. They catch up on his encounter with Melody's mom. And he mentions Melody slamming the door in his face. Did Melody slam the door in his face? I don't know. But he was talking about Melody's mom and her not being very receptive. And according to him, being disrespectful towards him. And being rude. 
and Marta's mom has always and forever been about staying in your lane, minding your business, not putting your nose in their relationship and so on. So she feels like Melody's mom should not really have a say and should not really be so integrated in Martel and Melody's business. Of course, Martel agrees. But I came to a conclusion and I got some clarity on why Martel is how he is as far as wanting people to be on his side despite his wrongdoing. Because he grew up in a single parent household and his mom has always been on his side no matter what. I've never seen Martel's mom admonish him for anything. She's always been the one to feel how she felt, but never communicated that to Martel. As far as Martel knew, he didn't really do anything that bad because she never scolded him. So I feel like that is what makes Martel feel as if he's supposed to have people on his side despite his wrongdoing because that's what his mother has been doing with him, you know. And let's jump over to Marceau. Marceau is talking to his employees. We know that Marceau is the owner of the Black Cigar Lounge, which Jalen is the general manager of. And they decided to give Jalen this job of general manager, knowing that Jalen had no experience in the general manager position or in any managerial position for that matter. And of course, Jalen had some worries and he wanted to be somewhat coached and he wanted, according to him, to be trained because he didn't have the experience. And the owners, Marceau and Letitia, promised to train him. However, we found out that they never did. And so the situation is that they didn't train him to be in the managerial position, but they expect so much of him. And that, to me, is very unfair because if you promise as an employer, actually, it's his responsibility as an employer to hire someone competent enough to hold such a high position in his newly formed business. I understand that Marcel wanted to keep the business running within the family. However, as a business owner, it is on you to pick the best person, family or not, for that high position and his wife was telling him that perhaps he should have looked for somebody more experienced but Marceau being someone that is very hard-headed and does not quite listen to his wife did what he wanted to do and now he's coming to Jalen as if Jalen is the issue when in fact you made the executive decision as the owner to hire somebody that lacked the experience needed to run your business so for me that's all to do with Marceau and his poor choices I remember Letitia last season telling him that, okay, we know that Jalen lacks experience, so maybe it would be a good idea for you to hire an assistant manager or somebody that is able to lead him. And of course, I don't believe Marceau listened to his wife. He never does. And he's currently stuck in issues now with Jalen that could have been avoided if he only took his wife's advice. So for me, it all stems back to Marceau. I cannot really blame Jalen because Marceau knew what Jalen offered and didn't offer and he still decided to hire him so whatever issues that he has with Jalen now is all on him now after they had a little talk of course Jalen feels like Marceau is good at teaching he's good at theoretical things but as far as really showing or giving Jalen the help that he wants and needs he doesn't get it from them Jalen feels like he doesn't get the support that he needs or requires from Marceau or Latisha they both tell him to figure it out on his own so if this person who lacks experience is coming to you for experience or for advice on the running of your business and you're telling him to figure it out on his own you have to expect things to not go smoothly because you're putting somebody that is not competent in a this high demand position what do you expect eventually they decided or he decided marceau to hire an assistant manager to help children that could have all been avoided if he did that in the very beginning. But anyways, Marceau doesn't listen to anybody. He seems quite stubborn, and I don't think anything Tisha tells him he will do unless he sees the need for it. But let's move on. Of course, Marceau and the Tisha are going to go to Houston at some point, so Jalen is going to be there by himself. So that assistant manager will come in handy at that particular point. So Marta meets up with Vanessa, Melody's mom, and Melody's mom just feels as if Martel is somewhat disrespectful to her because instead of conversing with her, he runs to social media and says that she has been keeping his children away from him, which she says has not been the issue. The problem here is the lack of proper communication among adults. If you, Martel, are feeling the need to jump to social media every time you have a disagreement with someone, then there's always going to be issues. The funny thing about it is he blames Melody for doing that same thing that he does, running to social media to air out her issues. 
it's easy for people like Martel to see the things that other people do and it's very difficult to see what they do themselves so essentially Vanessa had an issue with the disrespect and just the way that he went about things and she felt like people were coming at her disrespectfully when they didn't even have the sole picture of what really happened and she didn't appreciate that so essentially they decided to communicate better with each other and not blast each other on social media Melody also does it too but um Vanessa feels personally hurt by Martel's decision to carry on this affair that broke up him and Melody's marriage. Of course, Vanessa never felt like her daughter would also end up being a single parent, and it hurt her. And she felt she's justified in feeling hurt because essentially that's her whole, that's her family, and I don't think there's anything wrong with her feeling hurt by Martel's decision and her wanting to protect her own child who has been affected by his decisions. Um, I don't feel like she should interfere in that situation, but I do feel like she does have a say because she is part of the family and she should be able to show or tell Martel how she feels or how she was affected in the situation. Um, some people may feel differently. They may feel like Martel doesn't owe her that. But I feel like being a past stepson, there is somewhat of an obligation to at least communicate with the stepmom and let her know you know certain things just for decency sake just for chivalry just for having grown up this horse is concerned i feel like it is necessary but anyways um vanessa also feel like he lied and that they he put up this front that their marriage was so good but really it wasn't and of course she feels very good by the deception of it all and anyways the whitlows we learned that They've, they're newlyweds. Um, they were both previously married, got divorced, and found each other. They have two sons altogether. However, each of them brought one son into the relationship. Their names are David and Lemay. We're talking about Melody and, you know, the talk that Melody had with Tiffany about hiring interns for her and so on. And she also talks about being invited to Destiny's situation. She mentions the fact that she doesn't know Destiny, but I feel like she does. He wants her to take that opportunity to know, get to be, get to know other people and so on. Then we have Tisha. Tisha is in Houston. They have hopes of expanding Black into Houston. And so they talk. And Marceau is was supposed to be there with Tisha, but stayed in Huntsville to, I suppose, sort out some mishap that happened with the bottle labels. And they talk about romance and she wanting more. And he, he quits romance to sex. And she's like, no, it's not about the sex. I want more. I want the love. I want the passion. I want all of that. Of course, you know, every time I see Marceau, it always seems as if he's so disengaged to what Letitia is asking for, not what Letitia wants. And I'm thinking he, he decided not to show up in Houston on purpose. That was just an excuse for him not to show up in Houston together with Letitia. But anyways, we talk about a candlelit dinner and all that stuff. So maybe they're going to be working on their romance. Who knows? Hopefully, we know that he does show up in Houston because we saw the previews. So... Let's see how that works out with them. Destiny's lunch. Everybody shows up. Melody offers us some gifts. Everybody starts coming in. Kimmy comes in. She never knew of Destiny's divorce, so it takes her by surprise. She kept on saying sorry because she didn't know. However, Destiny has kind of gotten over it, so to speak. So she's at a different mind space with it as everybody that is just finding out the information Melody is kind of questioning Destiny a bit about why she keeps blocking Melody out of her struggle situation. And Melody starting to feel like perhaps she and Destiny aren't as close as she thought they were. And she's going to talk to her about that eventually. And that is kind of very questionable because it's like, if you're claiming that Melody is such a good friend to you, why aren't you letting her in? And Melody, of course, thinks maybe we're not that close. So anyways, I'm happy to see how that discussion moves along. Tiffany comes in and just drops bombs personal things that the group doesn't really need to know and it's really not the time for her to be divulging that amount of information the first thing she mentions of course is the fact that yes she did meet destiny at some point a lady of the chamber of commerce event she met laberic laberic won some type of prize and the woman that laberic was with was not destiny and destiny was just not ready or willing to hear that type of information so she excuses herself Miss Tiffany, we get some sass from Miss Tiffany because she's like, well, um, I didn't think that it was necessary for her to get up and walk away. And well, if it's her birthday, I'll let her cry if she wants to cry. And I'm not liking that from Miss Tiffany. All I see from that comment is drama. All I see from her is a shit starter. And I'm not liking it at all. Like, that is not the time for you to be divulging things about Laberic to Destiny. 
and I didn't appreciate that slick comment about oh it's not because she could crack to, if she wants to what I mean I'm not here for Tiffany right now I'm definitely not here for Tiffany but she's definitely here to disclose personal information I mean if she's not here for anything she's here for that she discloses the fact that okay she also knows Kimmy and that a uh, son or she discloses their sons went to the same schools together and that monster was vaping and stuff and it's like Kimmy didn't know that and monster is her stepchild and it speaks to the fact that Maurice does not let her into things to do with monster and it's crazy because they're living with, he is living with she is living with monster now so anyways there's that um Tiffany is here to stir up drama if we didn't know that before we know it now uh, Destiny's not here for it, Kimmy's not here for it, so we're gonna see how Tiffany plays into the dyma dynamic of the already established relationship with Destiny and Kimmy. Anyways, Kyra comes in next week. Kyra has already put the, the whole debacle theory to rest. She only congratulated Marceau. She also congratulated Tisha. Tisha, having her own insecurities, was very rude to Ki uh, Kyra. And for that alone, I'm not liking Tisha. Your insecurities and issues with Marceau has nothing to do with Kyra. So why are you putting out your anger and, anger and aggression on her? But that's the thing with Tisha. She never gives Marceau the business, but gives everybody else the business. No, give Marceau the business too. Don't put it out on Kyra. Kyra has nothing to do with your man's wandering eyes. But anyways, you guys, that's it for this review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Not too dramatic, not too... Not a lot of things happened. But either way, we got to see a bit about... Tiffany and I'm looking at her with the side eye because if it's drama that you're here to stir up first of all I'm not here for it but then it's the TV so we'll see what else Tiffany knows that she's gonna be dropping at inappropriate times we're gonna see but so far I'm not here for Miss Tiffany Cha girl anyways you guys that's it for my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville let me know what you guys think about this particular episode um and see you next time for my next reviews and like subscribe bye bye